Hi everyone and welcome to episode 51 of Off The Sprue. In this one we'll be uh, looking at the hull of the M1 Abrams and doing some further detailing amongst them the engine, the power plant. Now you'll recall that in the last video we uh, detailed the, uh, the engine bay of the M1 Abrams from the Ryefield model. Of course an, uh, a tank without an engine is just a gun emplacement. So uh, for this video we'll be detailing the, uh, the power plant. The M1 Abrams has a uh, gas turbine engine, a Honeywell ATG 1500. And uh, this is a monster of a power plant. It weighs in at about 10 tons. Uh, generates a thousand two hundred horsepower and uh, in this video I will try to uh, get the uh, the Ryefield model uh, kit parts as accurate as possible and again using uh, plenty of reference pictures. The kit instructions are quite clear there's uh, nothing difficult about this uh, the kit of course includes a full set of parts for a s accurate M1 Abrams uh, power plant we'll be adding some scratch ball detail the parts fit together very well. Um, they are all tabbed. I mean, there's no way to screw this up. Uh, everything fits together very nicely. And uh, assembly um, went without uh, any serious issues. Lovely fit on this, similar to the rest of the kit. Really no issues uh, whatsoever. You'll see there on your screen, I'm busy uh, assembling the, uh, the different uh, engine parts. Now in reference pictures you can see there's a mass of wiring on this beast and uh, I'll try and uh, add the, uh, the most important ones. To do this I'll be using uh, some silver wire 0.3mm as well as some lead wire. I also use some, uh, some styrene rod just for, for, for some, of the, uh, some of the cabling, some of the wiring and uh, that's what I'm assembling there on your screen. A tip I can give you is to always uh, try and drill uh, guide holes before trying to glue uh, thin wire to uh, engine parts. Uh, super glue by itself has trouble just sticking things to, uh, to styrene, uh, but with a small guide hole you will find this process becomes a lot easier. Guys, I'm very fortunate to have the assistance of a retired U.S. Army mechanic on this build. Um, the gentleman has an encyclopedic knowledge of the M1 Abrams. And uh, two things he pointed out was that uh, the kit parts are missing uh, hoisting uh, points, um, as well as a rubber seal at the front of the turbine. And this is uh, something I'll be adding. The hoisting points need to be attached about here. And uh, for, the, uh, for the parts themselves, I dug into the spares box and found just the right thing. There we go, those are the, uh, the correct parts. And uh, next up is just to mark the correct position. And uh, then using a little bit of styrene and uh, the, uh, the spare parts, I constructed these hoisting points. There's also a rubber seal at the uh, the front and that I added with a strip of styrene. Very easy to do. There you go. And that is ready to fit on the front of the engine. There you go, this is the current state of progress. Uh, I've added um, all the kit parts, added some wiring and uh, all that remains is uh, to get a uh, primer coat on this power plant. The primer that I used in this case is from Mr. Hobby. Um, this is an excellent primer, it's got some very uh, good uh, gap filling uh, properties and uh, in this case it's the correct uh, type of primer for this application. This is sprayed onto the engine in a uh, smooth coat and there you can see the result. Certainly loving that. Next up is pre-shading and uh, you know by now that I like to do this on uh, almost all my parts down to the smallest ones and uh, basically this uh, consists of uh, spraying uh, contrasting white and black 
onto uh, onto the surface before applying the base coat and that's what you're seeing on your screen right there for the uh, the rubber seal that I added to the front I'm using tire black and uh, that's what I'm uh, spraying there and uh, the interior color insignia white similar to what I used on uh, on the interior of the of the uh, the turret that is now sprayed onto the uh, the back portion of the uh, the engine Next up, I'm using uh, aluminium from Alclad, and this goes onto the top cover of the engine. For the engine itself, I used dark aluminium. Now, don't be fooled by dark aluminium. Of course, the, the engine will be steel, but uh, this color just works so well, and you can see the, the result there on your screen. Certainly loving that. To add some shading, I used NATO Black and uh, my Iwata Eclipse airbrush, and uh, I carefully uh, airbrushed in some uh, some shading into the appropriate parts of the engine. That's what's happening on your screen right there. Also added some uh, Vallejo smoke. This is a very useful color from uh, Vallejo uh, for anything uh, automotive or engine related. And uh, I applied this randomly just to uh, give it that very realistic, dirty uh, metal engine look. Once the masking is removed, this is the back portion of the engine. And uh, there we go. The base colors have been added and uh, we can now move on to some further detailing. For the vents at the back, the exhaust vents, I used a combination of uh, Alclad steel as well as Alclad jet exhaust. And uh, this gave a very realistic, uh, dirty vent look. Next up is a, a pin wash. I used a dark wash from uh, MIG Productions. And uh, this is carefully added uh, to all the recess detail, all the uh, bolts, all the rivets. And of course, this just uh, serves to bring out that, uh, that detail. Works very well on bolts. Next up, dry brushing. Uh, natural steel from Vallejo in this case. And uh, I'd now uh, dry brush this onto all the edges of the, uh, the metal. And that this will give us a very nice uh, realistic metal shine. So with some uh, additional uh, weathering uh, added, this is what the engine looks like at this stage. Of course, we're not done yet. There's still some more detail to be added, but uh, certainly progressing very well. Loving that metal uh, color there. Now the kit uh, didn't contain the, uh, the correct size no-step decals for the top of the engine cover. And uh, consequently, I, uh, I printed my own on decal paper. This is something I covered before in previous videos. You can look at episode 25 and episode 50. Um, basically, what I did is I downloaded a uh, stencil font and then in Photoshop set up a document, printed this out uh, on decal paper, and uh, this is now added to the top of the engine cover uh, like a regular decal. I also used Microset and Microsol something that will be familiar to, to most modelers. And uh, this certainly worked out very well. You can see the result there, those, uh, those markings on the, uh, the top cover of the engine. I also uh, took a look at my reference pictures and realized that this open panel needs to be closed. And uh, for this, I used a small strip of uh, sheet styrene that I painted uh, in a uh, similar way than the, uh, the engine itself. There we go, fixed up. Next is the uh, the exhaust vent at the back. Now this has some carbon buildup and uh, I did this with again NATO black as well as Vallejo smoke. Now in reference pictures, you'll see that uh, the, uh, the central part of this uh, gas turbine engine um, has some very realistic uh, burnt metal uh, color visible here. And that is something I'll have to replicate. To this portion on the uh, the engine itself and to do this I used two uh, colors from Alclad 
one being exhaust manifold and again jet exhaust and the combination of those two colors carefully sprayed onto the uh, center portion of that engine gave me that very realistic burnt uh, metal look. Next I had to add some more hoses. You can see these uh, brown orange hoses uh, in reference pictures. This is something that I covered in the previous video. Basically I used vinyl hoses from uh, the spares box, painted them and uh, they were then uh, added to the engine. Guys, and there we go. That is the completed M1A1 Abrams power plant. I'm very happy with this result. Certainly looking at uh, the business. Uh, we added a lot to the uh, parts provided by Ryfield model. And uh, this is such a nice detail item uh, for, this, uh, for this kit. Very snug fit into the back of the, uh, the engine bay. Now of course engine bays are seldomly clean and at the moment we have this uh, factory fresh uh, uh, engine bay in our model and uh, we'll need to uh, add some weathering. You can see that on the reference picture. There's some, uh, some rusty uh, runoff from the, the battery bank as well as some, uh, some dirt and grime that's uh, visible in the reference pictures and that's something we'll be adding next. For this I'll be using oils from uh, Uptailing 502 and uh, I'll also be using two products from Ammo MIG, this, uh, this being fuel stains as well as engine grime. First up I'm going to use ochre from uh, Uptailing for one of the oil colors and uh, this is applied to the side uh, below the, uh, the, battery, uh, the battery box, the battery bank. This is not a new technique, most uh, scale modelers uh, will know this. Uh, of course nothing uh, blends like oil paint. With a little bit of uh, white spirit, um, this is then blended in a downwards motion with that brush uh, in order to create a realistic looking uh, rusty uh, streaking uh, look. Next I use sepia and earth. And in a similar fashion, I now applied this to the opposite side of the engine bay. And again, using a white spirit, I blended this into the, uh, into the model. This is something you spend your, your time on, uh, repeatedly uh, adding that paint, blending it in, uh, evaluating, adding some more. Of course, this also has to go into the, uh, the white portions of the engine itself. And that's what I'm doing on the screen there. Next, uh, let's add some engine grime. Of course, engines are seldom clean and it's also the case with uh, the monstrous power plant on the Abrams. This is, of course, an enamel product, so it can be thinned with uh, odorless thinner of your choice. And uh, this is now brushed onto the metal parts uh, where engine grime would uh, accumulate in the real world. One of the things my uh, friend, the, the retired mechanic mentioned is that frequently they found a oil water mixture, sludge if you wish, in the back of the M1 Abrams. And in this case, fuel stains from Ammo MIG is the perfect product to use. In this case, I used a liner brush uh, and uh, this was basically dipped into the fuel stains liquid and uh, allowed to drip from the brush into the, uh, the back of the engine bay, similar to what would happen in the real world. And uh, you can see there immediately we're getting a very realistic effect. This stuff will dry in a glossy, wet uh, look, if you wish. And uh, it's a very realistic uh, way of adding that uh, oil uh, water soup, as my friend Mechanica calls it. So folks, there we go. That is the, uh, the completed engine bay with all the weathering added. There's some extra hoses that I, that I also added to the front. And uh, I'm certainly loving what I'm seeing here. Um, there's so much detail on this engine that I'm almost um, tempted to just um, add the engine to the side of the model. There's so much detail here that really one does not want this uh, to be hidden inside the, uh, the hull itself. It's something I'll sleep on at 
this stage, I think the, uh, the engine uh, should be a uh, display piece itself um, outside of the hull. But um, I'm really happy with this result and I'm excited to see where the uh, rest of the build will take me. Guys, as always, that is a list of all the paint colors and weathering products that are used available from your local hobby shop. Also, if you are curious to follow the rest of this build, please do follow me on Instagram. I post regular updates on my builds there and uh, you won't miss a single thing. Thank you for joining me in this video and I'm looking forward to seeing everyone in the next one.